faith can move mountain radio maria 91.3 fm the voice of truth ladies and gentlemen you're welcome to 91.3 radio maria the voice of truth the program is our heritage our heritage is a program cut across nigerian culture cultural festival food dance music location etc Culture is a way of life, including arts, beliefs, and institutions of population that are passed down from generation to generation. Once again, my name is Stella Francis. I am your host on 91.3 FM Radio Maria, the voice of truth. Today on our heritage, we shall be talking about interreligious and intercultural dialogue. Present with me here in the studio, great personalities from different countries, and um, I will allow them to introduce themselves. Themselves, starting from my right. Thank you. Uh, it's uh, an honor to have this opportunity, and uh, I am Abinat Girma. I came from Ethiopia, and uh, uh, I work in uh, an organization named Ethiopian Mulungi Ramanyo Church Development Commission under the capacity of uh, monitoring evaluation and communication coordinator and also a joint initiative strategies for religious action project manager very you're very welcome to radio maria thank you thank you i am called ken lepak jeffrey a tertiary sister of saint francis from cameroon i am here because one of our mission as franciscan is peace building and coming from the Anglophone region of Cameroon, where we have currently the crisis going on, we need a lot of mediation in our communities between the separatists and the military, between families that have had their people being killed because of the same armed conflict, and between people and students who have, in fact, anybody who has suffered. So as a tertiary sister of St. Francis, I was invited by the Karina Onaikon Foundation, God bless them, to come and get gain skills on interfaith dialogue. And so far, so good. Okay, you're very welcome. By the way, our brother that just introduced himself is also a fellow of Cardinal Onaikon's Foundation for Peace. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm honored and privileged. Uh, to participate uh, in this program. Uh, my name is Fatuma Kamene Juma, Director in HLA Initiatives uh, from Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, our organization mainly uh, empowers women and youth. And uh, in this uh, invitation and in this program, um, I'm eagerly uh, going to pass the information and the knowledge on interfaith dialogue and the importance of them in understanding our religious differences and embracing the coexistence so that we can have a peaceful nation. A nation that uh, cares for humanity, a nation that when uh, a person sees the other person sees a human being, not a tribe, not a religion. Thank you very much for pointing out that. I also, I, I am also advocating humanity first before religion, before tribe or anything. Thank you so much and our sister, Assalamu alaikum. I am by Nemre Kiaka from Nigeria. I am from Niger State. Uh, I want to thank this organization for giving me the opportunity to be part of this program, which is for the Nigeria Foundation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. By this introduction, you see the caliber of people that we I have in the studio today, and we will be we'll be diving into different as um, uh, various culture and then we will see how we can find a common ground or how we can learn from what they are doing in their different co country and we will get to know if re religion also is co causing a bit of conflict in their community I'm, I'm going to start straight with my sister Fatima you you, you mentioned that um, you are into peace building so yeah how has um, has culture in any way shaping what you're doing in peace building? Uh, thank you so much, uh, sister. Uh, what I can say that in our country, Kenya, I'll not speak, I'll not speak on behalf of Kenya, but I'll speak uh, on behalf of myself with what I know, uh, is that uh, uh, our youth, our, our women, uh, they lack, uh, most of them, the ones who are engaged in uh, 
in, uh, in, in religious differences, they lack exposure, they lack information. And uh, you find that uh, they live uh, what they, they, were, they were told by the people, maybe from the family, maybe from the religious people, but they have never done more research uh, to prove that whatever they are taught, whatever that they taught, it is the truth. So I believe that uh, through the knowledge that uh, we have gotten from here, I'll be able to uh, to see how we can work with the government, uh, not to segregate the population, but to bring them closer, to bring the sheikhs, to, to, to bring the, the pastors together so that we can preach the true religious beliefs and understanding so that we can be able to live with each other without any trouble. Thank you very much. Talking about living with each other, I'm coming to you, Sister Jethro. Uh, I want to hear your opinion about um, peace building. She, she, uh, Sister Fatima mentioned that um, sometimes uh, maybe religious leaders misinterpret um, the, the word of God. I don't know if you have experienced that or there's any elements of that in your community or country uh absolutely religion as they say is a foreign thing to everybody and even to us wherever i think it cuts across africa continent certainly there will be misinterpretation especially with um excuse me use the word pastors that have not been well informed i'll use the word well informed but it doesn't mean that they don't know anything, it's just the way they interpret it. And it's unfortunate that some don't have the patience to go through the studies and learn the act of religion as it is, and the science as it is, even though we can't explain everything. So you always have what we call misinterpretation. Also the issue of poverty. I know many of our friends who just get up one night and the next day you hear they are pastors. And I'm asking them, where did you get this from? Were you inspired or you just want to make money? And to tell you the truth, they start today, the next day they close up because they'll be able to make a little bit of money. But what I want to emphasize, as my sister said, is on the issue of humanity. We should be able to see people as children of God, made and brought into this world by one big God who has made, loved us all. So that I shouldn't see a Muslim brother in Cameroon and I begin to put him in a box of religion instead of seeing him as a brother and my sister. So I like what you just said about not boxing a brother into a box of religion, a particular religion that he is engaging in. We should see him as human first before talking about the religion where he belongs. So I'm coming to you straight, my brother from Ethiopia. Um, what do you think about the subject matter? Yeah, uh, I think. Um Firstly, we have to agree that uh, every human being uh, has sort of religious affiliation. But uh, when we come to, uh, in terms of understanding uh, the essence of religion and uh, understanding what God or Allah um, wants from us, uh, the problem comes there, especially uh, in interpreting or understanding the word of God. Uh, uh, we can say it in general, the scripture, um, you see, most people are there to serve only the interest of the people, not not that of God or Allah. So uh, I think that that uh, should have to be uh, retuned so as to uh, allow the community to flow in the right direction. And the other thing is, as Africans, um, I can say that we have a kind of allergy towards this education. So most pastors, religious leaders, uh, don't want to educate themselves to go into uh, theological college and uh, uh, catch up with uh, the exact meaning of what the Word of God or Quran says about. So if uh, we try to work on those areas, probably uh, religion couldn't be a means for conflict or war to happen. Okay, thank you very much. You are talking about allergy and my heart is beating very fast because actually they said that, um, uh, I don't know, people don't like to read, but um, if we read, if we want to be in a particular profession, maybe a pastor or a priest, 
we should be able to read and understand the scripture so that when we are disseminating information, we'll be sure that we are disseminating the right information. Yes. But I'm still going to ask you, is there any way, is there any way culture has been a problem, maybe in Ethiopia? Yeah, uh, usually uh, I think uh, um, we are not uh, valuing our culture, uh, our indigenous culture, as, as a continent. And uh, uh, it, it seems because of that that we are tending to catch up uh, those the Western cultures, uh, even uh, it can be manifested in the way we dress, in the way we speak. Uh, and most of the time, mm, uh, we, don't, we don't think that we are educated if, unless we speak English. Uh, so I think uh, serious work is, is required from us, from the African peoples, that uh, it is imperative to stick to our culture. As far as uh, we are uh, seriously uh, planning to go far, um, so culture uh, affects us one or the other way. Every individual, whenever they reside in a given community, uh, and in Ethiopia, most uses um, and the women, uh, even elders are lacking such kind of components while they are living uh, in their community. Uh, and uh, there is a propensity to incline to the Western, to, to the Western culture. And even uh, uh, we like, we prefer to watch uh, Western movies um, instead of uh, encouraging or viewing our local, local movies. So uh, this can be manifested in the way we dress, in the way we speak, in the way we greet even and uh, in the way we communicate each other. Uh, and several years back in Ethiopia, an elderly uh, people are, are highly respected and valuable people. But currently, you don't see such kind of things because the tradition has been wiped out and replaced by another culture. So, uh, as I said before, uh, if we intend to go far, uh, we need to go back to our roots. Thank you very much. I like the ending parts of what you're saying. If we have, if we need to go far, we have to go back to our culture. Um, do you agree? Yes, I do agree. What I say so is that, for instance, what is happening in Nigeria these days is ignorance and discrimination. Once, once you are not an indigenous of a state, let take for instance you went to look for admission in east they will first of all first of all consider they are indigenous first once you go to north to look for admission from uh, maybe from south they'll consider northern and first they will not give you the admission and why i said ignorance let's look at what is happening in nigeria these days this issue of boko haram banditry and so on and so forth People that are into all these things, they are ignorance of what ignorance of what is not in our book, which is Quran. Okay. Because they don't have the knowledge of it. Maybe they just hear, they see, and if anything should happen, they will just pick a, 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 a violence from there. Yeah, talking about that, I also think that the religious leaders should be educated, just like my brother mentioned. Um, brother from Ethiopia mentioned before, religious leaders should know what the scripture is saying so that when they disseminate it, the, their followers can also emulate the right thing, not trying to manipulate the scripture. Um, Sister Fatima, Fatima, please, can, can you tell us if there's also, is culture also causing a bit of controversy in Kenya? Um, actually, I can say that uh, uh, in Kenya, the cultural activities and traditions, they're the ones who are going to go together now. Because uh, religious uh, perspectives and religious uh, religion made people to forget about uh, their culture. So I can say that nowadays the government is really, is really working hard to ensure that each and every child has to have the originality name of, the, of, the, of where he, he or she is coming from. Another thing is that uh, we the government in Kenya is, is, is enforcing that uh, we have uh, uh, the Swahili 
as our national language so that people can be united with a particular language so that we'll be able to communicate and even examine. Uh, another thing is that uh, at the rural area, every community has has to educate their children on their culture and the language so that we don't uh, shun away from our culture. So uh, that means that uh, uh, religion has really divided people. And uh, the only solution is to go back to our culture. Thank you very much. I think that I like what the Kenyan people are doing. And I hope that Nigerian government officials are listening to us. There's something for us to emulate because if we start from with from the grassroots i think it will go a long way and then when you start with children because it's easy for children to catch up then we will be building a better society sister jetro do you agree with that absolutely i do the future lies in the hands of the young okay. because they still have few minds i like to emphasize on that few mind and that's why scripture says let the children come to you when Christ invites the children because it is to people such as those that the kingdom of heaven belongs. They are not, they are not yet corrupted in their mind. They think open, they think human, they think family, they think one. A child is as honest as a book. You just open it and it obeys you. So I fully agree that we need to do something to brainwash all what has been from the minds of our kids and go back and install what is supposed to be culturally and ethnically and reinforce the issue of oneness, the issue of nation, the issue of continent. And as uh, my brother said here, let us make Africa beautiful for Africans and stop westernizing ourselves. Okay, thank you very much. Let's be make Africa Africa and stop westernizing ourselves. You have mentioned the Western culture. Yeah, Abinta also have mentioned that the uh, the Western movies is taking over all of the place for young people in Africa. They prefer to watch the local uh, the um, Western movie. But we are encouraging and we are calling on young people that to embrace our local movies and learn from what we and learn for our culture so that we can be able to pass it down i will open the phone line so that our listeners can also call and contribute if you are listening to us call us and tell us what you think about the subject matter the number to call is 081 084 475 i repeat 081 084 475 one is call us and let us know what you think about the subject matter do you think that we should embrace the western culture and forget about our culture or do you think we should find a reason to bring our culture so that it can shape in our society our community please call us and let us know so um brother i i, I she, she mentioned the scripture aspects of it and i'm just wondering do you also think that religion is a problem in our society today or in Africa generally? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, religion uh, is a problem. Uh, that's what is happening now, but it shouldn't be. Uh, because um, most of the African countries are presumed to be religious. As compared to other continents, Africa is uh, known to be the most religious. But contrary to that, uh, we see religion as a means for conflict to happen. So uh, the basic thing, uh, what I what I what I believe is, uh, I think some external parties have interest uh, to be uh, to use religion as a means uh, for conflict to happen. And uh, when we see, when we look uh, inside, there are also some parties or uh, peoples who. Have no clear understanding of on the essence of their religion. Uh, my sisters uh, have mentioned, and uh, most people do not have a clear understanding on the Quran and also the, the Holy Bible. So, uh, lots of conflicts are uh, emanating from from such having such kind of misunderstanding, and uh, uh, religion shouldn't be a means to conflict. So, uh, we need to work on those areas and uh, use religion as a means to uh, create a social cohesion and uh, harmony among, among us. Thank you very much. I like harmony among us. I'll come to you. Um, 
since you are in Nigeria and I would like you to maybe talk to our um, religious leaders I, I believe they are listening to us and then what, what what advice will you advise the religious leaders giving the subject matter and what we have discussed so far well what I have to say is this if our religion leaders can come together and start preaching peace we should stop seeing ourselves as as uh, we should see ourselves as one we should stop discrimination we should not see this person as a Christian or as a Muslim. We should come together, preach peace, carry everybody along. That is when we have peace in this country. Thank you. Like I was saying, I was saying that how can uh, there's insecurity everywhere? I, I I don't know. I don't know. We are from different country. Does anybody is there anybody who is not facing insecurity in their country? No. No, so uh, obviously the answer is no. So, but how do we, how can um, culture shaping our security? Can we bring culture to, and security together? Is it possible? Um, to me, uh, I think it is possible because uh, we have to instill the culture of honesty uh, from childhood to adulthood. Uh, this is this will help us in fighting corruption. Uh, you find that uh, our leaders have failed. Uh, our fail, our fail the, our our people by not providing services, uh, basic services to the people. People are not able to access resources because of corruption. So I can say that uh, when we use culture uh, as a way of changing or transforming a country to a peaceful nation, the culture we instilled in us uh, up to date has made most of us excel in life because we are able to be honest and the transparent in whatever we do. Only that few elements in our society who are very greedy. So I think that with culture, it will help us uh, to wipe out uh, the people who are not uh, helping us in development of our counties or our, our, our areas. Because once the area is developed, the is, de is developed, the opportunities are able to be accessed. The investors are able to come because there is peace and security in that area. So let us work on the issues to do with the leadership. I think uh, on the side of leadership, that is what has failed many African nations. And the moment we address that through culture, uh, people to be true to their people, people to be honest with the government, uh, with the opportunities and, uh, and, and incentives, I think we are going to move far as a nation. Thank you very much. Government officials should be truthful to what they do. And if there are incentives for community, it should be given to communities. It's not meant for your family because you are already opportune. There are those people who are vulnerable and not opportune. What is meant for them should not be for you. Don't convert it to your family and friends. Thank you very much for that one. And then Gertrude, there are some of the African cultures that are fading away. I don't know if, say for instance, the tribal mark. I don't know if there's tribal marks in Cameroon. Sure. Well, okay, so are they also fading away? Because in Nigeria, I think called tribal marks are fading away. And what do you think we can do? How can we revive? These are some of the ills of westernization. Because in those days, it was very easy to identify. The marks were an identity for the people of that area. And it didn't just go with marks. It had meaning. Because it was not just about giving people some special desires. But it had meaning. Yeah. Culture itself is, identifies people. And it gives them a better, a better stand in, the, in society. Because it is the pride of the people. Right. And the people know that this is us. This is what it means to be, uh, let me just say, we are the, of the Bangwa tribe in Cameroon. The Bangwa people are known to be having, they call it 99.9 .9 cents. That means that we are very clever. It gives you some fine sense of identity and pride. It, that we are very respectful, we are very hardworking. When you bring culture, you bring back these values of culture, the girl child or the male child of that community is already carrying this along and believes that in my culture it is been normal for me to be respectful, for me to be sacred, for me to be protective, and for me to be secure. So there is no way you can allow another person to do something wrong against the culture because it will spoil it. If religion came and embraced these values and added just something to our culture that we knew already, religion will not be an issue of division because there's no way culture says we should divide ourselves. Yeah, talking about division, I, I, I'm, I'm just wondering, I don't know, is there tribal marks in Ethiopia? Uh, no, 
okay so but um, now she's talking about culture she's talking about religion has um, religion has um, done anything to alter the culture in um, at, um, Ethiopia. Ethiopia yeah uh, I think uh, one of the sources uh, for the conflict in Ethiopia is religion um, in fact uh, we say uh, almost 98% of our population in Ethiopia is religious but uh, uh, contrary to that uh, conflicts uh, are happening uh, among those uh, communities so um, the basic thing that we need to consider is uh, we are believing in harmony uh, and in cooperation for the last I think uh, I can say more than 50 years something like that uh, but conflicts are ha are being manifested now currently and when, when we ask ourselves where those things are coming from the first thing is there are external parties who uh, want to uh, uh, force us to involve in conflicts so that they can they can get advantages to uh, secure their interests the other uh, the other thing is those religious leaders uh, are are the one that, that are allowing or, or, or instigating conflicts among the communities uh, starting from uh, having a clear understanding on the scriptures and then uh, enforcing the community to instigate against the government uh, not uh, for the justice but uh, with the intention of uh, achieving their interest so uh, those things are there but you see, in our country, as, as, as uh, my sisters have said, uh, there is a cultural tradition way or, or traditional way of uh, resolving conflicts. And uh, say, for example, in Oromo uh, ethnic group, uh, there are peoples by the name, we call them Abba Gada or father of Gada, father of the law. And uh, uh, as to women, uh, we call them Harasinke. Harasinke means a woman with a stick. And uh, whenever there are parties who want to even kill each other, and then uh, these women came in, might come in and drop their stick in front of those conflicting parties, and immediately uh, they seize uh, their conflict and uh, they prefer to sit and to talk to each other, to negotiate or to um, discuss their stuff uh, each other. Oh, very interesting. I hope community leaders out there are listening and then our sisters from other countries also are listening. We are learning from what the people in Ethiopia are doing. I hope that we can contextualize it in our various countries and it will work. Call us. Good afternoon. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Can, yeah, please reduce the volume of your radio set. Good afternoon. Tell us your name and where you're calling from, please. Good afternoon. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Hello. Sorry, we lost that call. And <laughs> um, I'm coming back to you as in Nigeria. And um, how do you think that culture can help can um, can help the security system in Nigeria? Do you think culture can help the security system in Nigeria? Yes. Yes. If only we can go back to the origin. Why I say that is this. Before now, we used to have peace in Nigeria. But everybody is doing away with the culture and it's causing a lot of problems. But once we can go back to the roots or the origin of where we came from, I think we will have the peace we need in this country. Um, Fatima, do you think that culture can shape in our um, security system? both in Nigeria or even in Nairobi? Um, I'm of the opinion that uh, uh, despite the, the culture that uh, we have, uh, as Africans we have very unique culture that uh, is highly uh, guarded by other continents. And that's why you see many tourists coming to Africa to see what we have and uh, sometimes to test what we have. Uh, we have a very rich culture uh, if we can go back to our roots, as our sister said, and analyze the situation. And before that, let us look at what divides us. If it is religion, let us have a dialogue. 
are very honest dialogue where we bring on board our Muslim leaders and the Christian leaders to sit down and have a, a conversation on how they believe and why they believe and so that we can have a true picture of a real Muslim, a true picture of a true Christian. Uh, that will bring us together as, as, as a nation, as an African people. Thank you very much. I like the fact that you pointed out dialogue. But when she said dialogue, she said religious leaders and um, the Christians and Muslims. I think that one element is missing. I don't know if you agree with me, Jethro. Do you agree that... Um, um, religion, sorry, traditional leaders should also have a seat on the dialogue table. Yes, I think I think so because it's not. Why am I affirming with you? Religion is foreign. I would say so. In fact, what we are believing in, what we are talking about today, Christianity, Muslim, is foreign. But traditional, traditional religion is what was ours which just needed to be amended or, or, or improved upon, let me just say so. Because we had our own deities that we believed in, and they were authentic, and they did many miracles for us. We just needed to improve on it, or just the approach to make it look like, okay, we are talking about one same deity, the Alpha, the alpha and Omega Almighty God. So if dialogue without involving these uh, uh, traditional persons will mean we, are, we don't even know what we can never go back to the origin. Let me use it, the, the word she, she used. We'll not be going back to our roots. We'll not, be, we'll not be talking as Africans. We need to go back to the essence. How was our religion? What was in it that was in the first? And what was in it that needed improvement? Maybe there were some issues that were bad, but we need to bring all on, that, on the table. It might not be dialogue again because it's for more than two, but at the same time, there needs to be an open discussion on the table ask everybody in fact it's a it's a, it's a must do it's okay must do. yeah so sister um, jethro is telling us that we need to bring all parties together including both the christian muslims and traditional leaders yes. they all deserve a seat when we're talking about um, religion in africa i have attended a forum citizens forum that said that um african problem african solutions sure. i've been to do you agree that we need to embrace african solutions definitely uh the problems that are happening now are created by us and uh, a remedy for that is uh, for that comes from us so i think uh, instead of even uh, i say for example, instead of uh, bringing Western theories and like uh, conflict resolution, blah, blah, whatsoever, I think it's better to uh, look into our culture so that we can, we can derive uh, indigenous ways of uh, resolving our conflicts, uh, even conducting dialogues. See, in Africa, uh, people have a culture of sitting together, eating each other, um, and discussing their their stuff uh, by themselves so um, I think as I said before it's better for us to go back to our roots uh, so that we can create uh, African community that cannot be manipulated and uh, and uh, influenced <coughs> by some other parties thank you I think we have all agreed that we should go back home we should come back to Africa and proper an African solution. Yes, we have all agreed, but can does anyone of us, can anyone just say one of the things that we can use, one of the approaches we can use to profile an African solution? Uh, probably the first thing comes from uh, exercising our religion. And when we come to Islam, Islam uh, means peace. And uh, when, when we come to Christianity, uh, it's all about Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ uh, is the preacher of peace and even he is by himself peace okay. so um, if these religions teaches and uh, preaches uh, us about peace then uh, I think the, the only thing that we are lacking is is being practical uh, and, and uh, walking the talk is what we lack so if, if we work on those areas religion in Africa might be used as a means for creating peace if I can just make a, a contribution to that. 
the Cardinal Nikon Foundation uh, approach, which has brought all of us here, is one of the best things I've ever experienced, and one of the best ways to solve some of these things that we just talked about. What I have understood just this one week, I have never known anything about Muslims. All I knew was this caption, Muslims are aggressive, Muslims can hit you, you just better be careful and mind your business. But what I have learned this week is so sweet to me. I respect them as religion, I respect them as my brothers, and I don't even see them anymore. I, I, I have no fear anymore. We can live together. So such forum, like what we are doing this day, is one of the best solutions and education. Oh, thank you very much. I think Cardinal is wearing a very big shoes. <laughs> and if uh, I, I hope he's listening to us, all the uh, members of the foundation are listening to us because the um, sister have uh, Jethro have just made an open confession on air now, and then I hope that. Um, they would be able to bring more people. I know it's not easy, but I am also praying for them to bring more people and educate them in interreligious and intercultural dialogue so that we can achieve the desired peace that is needed. So yeah, like I was trying to say that um, you have, I think the foundation, the Cardinal Onikon's Foundation has given so much in this one week. And um, can you please share maybe a little of what you learned or what perspective perspective did you come with to the to the table when you were coming and given that it's christians and muslims did you have any um opinion yes i think uh, this wonderful program has impacted a lot in me before now i never knew that christians and muslims are one from the origin yes I said, what I was saying before was, I never knew that Christians and Muslims are from the same origin, but this program has impacted a lot in me. Now I can see myself uh, as a Muslim and Christians as one, which is a wonderful uh, something. Like, as we were told during Christmas, when you are given a Christmas rice or whatever, we are not allowed to eat the meats but you are allowed to eat the christmas rice but through this uh enlightenment with the uh, enlightenment enlightenment with the scholars or with our Lecturer. lecturers what they say that is allowed and is lawful to eat their meats and we are all one from the origin so islam and christianity we are all the same we should stop discrimination yeah. and we should stop stop seeing ourselves as if we are no, we, are, we are enemies we are all one yeah yes. i would like to say in your word like halal, halal lawful and unlawful yes yes so please when you get the christmas rice be sure that you eat our chicken the christian chicken yes. it's sweet it's yes. chicken it's the same chicken please can you share your thoughts fatima <laughs> uh, when i looked at this application uh, i was wondering how is it going to be like uh, are we going to talk about traditional things or what but the moment I saw the program, uh, it's very um, inclusive, and I uh, find that we have uh, qualified uh, lecturers uh, from both from both Islam and Christianity, and I came to learn that uh, it's possible if we all be honest in our actions, not even the talks that we've been having. Now it is our time to act, to act, to get to to get out of our comfort zones and safeguard our interests as Africans. This is the time to ensure that whatever we have been taught, uh, it should go hand in hand with our actions, with our talking as Muslims, as Christians. And I know this foundation will not be able to reach each and every one in this world, especially in Africa. But as we are going, I promise that I'm going, I on myself as uh, from Kenya, I'm going to be a good ambassador of this foundation uh, to go and replicate the same. Uh, learning to our communities to ensure that we understand each other and we are tolerant on each other and we are able to coexist so that we can have a peaceful nation. Okay, thank you very much, Jethro. <laughs> you are just one person from Cameroon, and then it's uh, uh, how I know that is a large, is a, a whole country. How can you disseminate what you have learned or as as peace builder or ambassador of peace in the making? How can you ensure that there's peace and um, harmony in your community? I can say my coming to this foundation at this time is a miracle. 
and it's a god ordained. I have just been transferred to Adamawa region in Cameroon, which is principally Muslim. The Christians are only about 10%. And one of my very first shocks when I got there was I was lost about the Muslims. I was really lost. I had never had any knowledge about what they do, what who they are, their religion. Actually, it has been a, a very beautiful educative school for me. I am going back to my community. I'm going to meet the, the Malams. I'm going to meet the women forums. I'm going to meet the children. I'm going to even meet my brothers and sisters, the Muslim who I will be living with for five years maybe. And we are going to do a lot of things at the level of development, at the level of education, interreligious programs we will also carry out in the community, care of the elderly and the children, education for the handicapped and for the less privileged. And we have a challenge in the community, malnutrition. You know, culturally, they have their own kind of food, which sometimes is very rich, but not too rich for the upbringing of children. So many of them are malnourished. And we're going to do that at the level of the community door to door to be able to bring out some of this beautiful knowledge. I am an ambassador for peace by mission and by passion, and I'm going to even be more thanks to Kanina Laikon Foundation. Okay, thank you very much. I like the door, the, the, the door to door advocacy that you are um, suggesting or proposing, and I, I wish you all the best with that. Thank so, <laughs> yeah, please <laughs> let's hear your final thoughts and uh, how you are going to disseminate some of the information as peace ambassador in the making. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the COFP or this the Cardinal Onaikan Foundation for Peace and uh, uh, the Cardinal and uh, his staff. They are doing a remarkable job, and uh, uh, you need to be proud of that. So I uh, hope these things will continue for the future, for the fact that uh, it directly addresses the problem that is found at the grassroots level. Uh, so uh, when I came here, uh, I thought that I could get uh, some superficial um, understanding on the essence of Islam and Christianity. But uh, what, what I have found is, is much more than that. And uh, uh, it really impacted me, empowered me, and uh, encouraged me. And uh, in short, it made me to understand that before religion, there is human. Thank you. So um, irrespective of our demarcations, I mean, we can have uh, religious tenets, but uh, we shouldn't allow to use them as uh, a means of discriminating others. Before religion, there is humanity. Thank you. Before religion, humanity confess. You have 20 seconds to to give, to say your last or final thoughts, please. Yes, I, will still, I still want to appreciate this uh, foundation, Kaina Onaika Foundation, for giving me the opportunity to be part of this program. And I want to say that I've learned a lot in this program. And what I achieve, inshallah, I will go back to my community and and impact it to the others. Thank you very much, impact others. I think this is what the training is, training of the training. So we should all go back to our various homes, countries, and um, be advocates of what all the beautiful things we have said on this note i will say thank you for listening for all those who took time to call in we appreciate your calls your your contributions were wonderful and to my guests you were all wonderful thank you, thank you. Thank you. and thank you. have a blessed day <laughs>